Hello again. Today we are discussing how to find the right real estate agent in Vancouver for you. So this is a very loaded question. Uh, there are lots of agents now. Uh, there's 14,500 realtors in Greater Vancouver, I believe. Uh, 14,500 is the number. How far out that actually goes, I believe, is just Greater Vancouver. Um, so there's lots to pick from. So more importantly than that, obviously, as you can imagine, not all agents are the same. Uh, some are brand new, some are veterans, and you're really trying to find what is valuable for you. Uh, criteria-wise to pick who is going to be the best fit for you, who you're going to interview, uh, and what value you're really looking for. So in a nutshell here, we are not looking for just any agent you see on the side of a bus going down the street. There's no context to that. Uh, you need to find an agent who you're actually going to value their opinion based on what you know about them. So are they a specialist in your building? Are they a specialist in your neighborhood? Are they a specialist in your type of uh, product? Are they someone that you've met in passing and feel you trust? Are they someone that's being referred for you to you from a friend? These are all things we're going to kind of touch on. Um, so what to look for uh, in an agent. The main thing here I think is looking for someone that you believe what they're telling you can actually deliver. So what's the end result here? You want your product sold for the highest price with the best terms probably in the shortest amount of time. So let's break that down. How are we going to find this person? Uh, we're going to we want to find someone traditionally who is familiar with what we have. Uh, you don't go to a doctor to get dental work. So we want to find someone who's, if we've got a townhouse in Mount Pleasant, let's say, who is familiar with Mount Pleasant? Let's break that down again. Who is familiar with townhomes in Mount Pleasant? Uh, and these are the, the ways you need to really assess, in, in our opinion, uh, how to select your agent. Or negating that whole way to look at it, who do we trust that has a real estate license, that has experience in strata, that has experience in townhomes in the Mount Pleasant area? So you can kind of go from two uh, sides, and we touch on that in a little bit next, chemistry versus credentials, but we really want to make sure that the person you're uh, meeting with, I always suggest meeting with a few. Perfect world, you can meet with three agents. If you've got one that you're, for a variety of reasons, worked with in the past or, or have been referred to, uh, have chosen to go with before signing, it doesn't hurt to go talk to one or two more. Uh, you never know what you're going to hear. Uh, hopefully that just solidifies what you thought about the agent that you've already selected and or you've solidified that you're going to work with the agent you've already chosen, but you hear a few things in these meetings that may be of value to you in your situation that you can bring to your selected agent and say, how about we think about doing this sort of thing as well. Uh, so basically, what is the agent, uh, how is the agent going to do what they say they're going to do for you? Uh, the marketing plan that they lay out, uh, has the agent, if they've got a very heavy traditional marketing presence, uh, newspapers, uh, mail, like postage mail, uh, bus ads, billboards, all this sort of stuff, always be very specific when the agents are advertising themselves on a bus ad. Uh, this isn't going to help you sell your property. Uh, how much dedicated advertising are they going to give to your specific address? And why are they picking the advertising avenues that they are going to, that they're telling you for that? So are they saying, we want to use mail, we, we use mail. Well, have you had success selling properties with mail? Uh, we use Facebook and Instagram. Have you had success selling properties on Facebook and Instagram? Uh, these are the kind of questions you need to be asking. Don't be shy, there's no stupid questions. Uh, there's a lot of money on the line here. This is a very big process uh, moving forward. Um, and this is simply a very important decision. So there's no stupid questions. If you've sold before and you're hearing something you uh, you, you haven't heard before, uh, ask another question about it. Because the agent is there uh, telling you everything about their plan. You're interviewing them, of course. So always remember that. And yeah, I just can't stress enough, there's no stupid questions. If, if they're talking about technologies that you don't know or don't understand, ask to see more specific details about that. Ask the agent to go right into the Instagram account that they're using and show you what's going on, what they mean. Um, 
it's very important that you are on the same page as the agent all the way along um, and clarity is always key we believe and these are the types of questions uh, that are needed if those are the questions that bring you more clarity. Uh, again, the pricing that they're suggesting you go with, we suggest you list in this price range. Uh, why are they suggesting that price range? Is it based on the most recent comparables? Is it based on distant comparables, but their experience in the market between those comparables and now? Uh, what, where, are they, where are these numbers coming from? Uh, very important to ask this and ask specifically why. If it is or is not in line with the numbers you want or think the property is worth yourself, uh, look at the facts that the agent is showing you and, and are these credible facts? Are these realistic? Do I feel that these are, are justified reasons? Because all the public information is is readily available for the buyers of that property, of your property as well, keep in mind. So all that stuff, unless you're getting additional insight uh, into private deals that have taken place, which essentially can't be proven by just pulling up a listing sheet to other potential buyers, um, that public information is is kind of key in what the, the buying public is going to be looking at to base their decisions on as well. Uh, moving forward, chemistry versus credentials, as we touched on, is the chemistry you have with your agent positive, negative? Do you feel that this person is telling you, not the truth, but do you feel that this, is a, this person is a straight shooter? Uh, and are you going from that perspective on picking an agent? This is someone I feel comfortable with, They, I, I feel I can trust them, I feel that I can work with them hand in hand from the start to the sale of the product. Uh, and I feel that this is going to be a comfortable situation based on the way this person is presenting their case to me, or are you going on uh, credentials? I sold the last five in the building, I sold the last ten in the neighborhood, all these comparables are mine, you should go with me because uh, I know what I'm talking about and I've got the most experience among any, all the other agents in the area, uh, these sorts of things. So perfect world, you've got to blend. You've got the most qualified agent, uh, and you trust that person, or it's going to lean one way or the other. And is it more important to you to lean on the credential side, or is it more important to you to lean on the uh, chemistry side? And that's something you need to be very aware of, I believe. And as we all have expectations of people we're hiring and paying to do a job, just be very aware of where you're placing the most expectation uh, in those two credentials. Because from my experience, people typically will select an agent based on one of those two kind of directions of, uh, of thought process and focus. Referrals matter. Uh, referrals are of course key. They kind of create a warm contact in this potential agent that you're interviewing. If my brother used them, uh, I trust them now more than I would if I just picked them off of a, an Instagram post or a bus ad or, or an advertising flyer uh, because someone I trust has used this person. So always in anything, referrals matter. Uh, and are key and kind of bring that, that person now into kind of that warm contact uh, arena, if you will, as opposed to just a, a cold contact stranger that you're sitting across from. And that's always key and I always uh, suggest putting a lot of weight on those decisions um, uh, or more weight on those people, I should say, when they're coming into the mix of, let's say, the three people that you're choosing to interview because you've already got that kind of assumed level of trust because so-and-so uh, has already used them and had a good experience. Uh, how to tell if you're working with the wrong agent. This again, um, I, I find really comes back to the whole chemistry credentials, more so on the chemistry side. Uh, if you're not getting the right vibes, for lack of better words, uh, from the agent, if you feel that they're not elaborating as much as they should on the information they're giving you, if they're very difficult to get a hold of, if they said one thing I'm going to call you every Monday and give you updates and they don't. Uh, <clears throat> it, it, this really goes on the uh, trust factor again and what you're feeling. Uh, it, it's similar to the sense that uh, when we go and we interview agents, typically it's for an hour and we either do or don't we interview, let's say, three people, an hour each, they pitch to us, and then we pick one. And then we're kind of with them from start to finish, uh, assuming there's a result, or start to the severing of that con contractual relationship, and you pick another one. Um, a lot of times, 
similar to when you're buying a property and the market's busy, you go into an open house, you see the property for 15 minutes and you spend a million dollars or half a million dollars or whatever it may be. When we look at the, the perspective of that, that's kind of crazy, uh, but that's the way the market kind of works and what everyone kind of has to get up to speed with the market gets used to. But much more so unlike a house and it's fundamentally is this house in good order is this house the layout in the neighborhood we want the agent is uh, fundamentally is this someone we trust is this someone we believe we're gonna believe the things they tell us about the deal moving forward and the situation so trust is the biggest thing and these trust red flags are, are commonly the the red flags that we see um, that, that sever relationships so you really want to lean on this trust aspect I think from the start and really make sure the person is trustworthy in your eyes and based on their presentation to you face to face and the criteria they're giving you to justify themselves as your best option as an agent that you really feel comfortable with that person. Uh, that's it. I'm going to leave it there 11 minutes. Uh, if you have any other questions on this topic, Jay at McKinnisMarketing.com. Excuse me, 604-771-4606. Uh, we're located here in downtown Vancouver. Call us anytime. Love to sit down. Thanks again. Bye for now.